What's up guys, it's trying to try too, man. I know I haven't seen you in like 800 years, but I also haven't seen you, so maybe you should start explaining. Okay, so we've got 30 minutes of Legends Arceus footage here. You might have seen other people covered. If so, have fun. Go on with your life. Okay, so I've been working on this video with Legends Arceus coming in like two weeks where I'm gathering up the timeline of credible rumors leading up to the last two weeks where this game comes out and putting it together and I took out all the ass craps. What other craps are there? I mean, the ass rumors where like anyone could have written it, only stuff with substance to it. Cause you know, I freaking hate leaks. Put up a big thumbnail, big arrow, leaks. Easy, get that bread. I haven't had bread for weeks. <laughs> so while y'all getting that bread, I got a freaking bagel. Give me some bread, guys. I mean, is a bagel worse than bread? So anyhow, just wait for that. It'll be like a few days. I'm kind of ass at editing it together. But meanwhile, we have this thing, which is 30 minutes of Legends RCS gameplay. I say this in the rumor video I'm working on, but like, we don't know yet if this is a game you want to buy or don't want to buy. You kind of have to go in with the 50-50 mind. So I'm hoping this will clear that up because it seems like there's no more trailers left for Legends RCS. We're gonna have to do the rest of the hype season ourselves. I'm gonna fill in the rest of your hype season with those rumors. You know, ask thumbnail, you won't notice. But yeah, they're posting commercials now, and now they got a 13 minute gameplay preview, like this is E3. This is the end of the hype season. Let's see what this got. Okay. Welcome trainers. Thanks English. for joining us today for a preview of the upcoming game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Sucker, you never say that to me again. I know this ain't even about the game now. Yo, you think Masuda is being like, Ark. When Masuda sits down on his chair, the sucker don't say Arceus. He says, Arceus. It's not Arceus. It's not Noah's Ark. They're going to turn him into the Noah's Ark Pokemon. Like, he saved all the people. He's a ship. A llama ship. He's the Ark of the New World. He took everyone from the old world, brought him. Shut up. Saka, he's an Arceus. He's Arceus. You ever see someone, you're like, damn, you Arceus. But I won't say that to your face because I'm too busy. I'm not looking at your face. Releasing January 28th exclusively on the Nintendo Switch system. Today, we want- Boys. Exclusively. Nintendo Switch. I'm telling you time and time again, what does Sony got? When we got exclusive- What gameplay footage not final? It better be final. I'm sorry. Your adventure is set in the expansive Hisui region. In an age long ago when it was rare for people in Pokemon to live in close harmony. In time, Hisui will come to be called the Sinnoh region. You know, that is a kind of a nice little lore. This is a time when people in Pokemon didn't... No! And then they showed the Gardevoirs. Bro, it's a time where pe people haven't screwed up the nature of Pokemon, right? So that's why Voltorbs are like that. That's all I wanted to say. What the hell is that in the back? So you could see Mount Cornet's in the distance, and since it's in the center of the region, maybe like a lot of the times you're wandering around the game, you could probably look in the right direction and just see it in the distance, which would make it a sick final spot for the end of the game for like Arceus to be there. Cause you've seen it in the background for the whole game, and then you can finally go to it. Mount Coronet rises from the center of the Hisui region, surrounded on all sides by areas with distinct environments. Next thing is these little crystals. So, you know, when it comes to RPGs, JRPGs, Tales of Arise, or the new fancy game the kids play Genshin, it, they'll say it. Okay, you've got these things in the overworld. Let's just use Tales of Arise, for example, right? You'll find these crystals in the overworld and they contain stuff that you can then sell to the merchants. Also, you'll find like freaking potatoes and stuff on the ground. So you pick them up and you make yourself food. Maybe you can make a certain dish that heals your whole party and stuff. So these things on the ground could turn out to be good. And that being said, this coral thing could turn out to be nothing. Each now, Saka, it has to be something. Look at that crap over there. It's glowing. That means you gotta go collect it. Okay, we got this sick looking place in the valley. You got the freaking snowiness. You can still see Mount Cornet in the back. And then we have Breath of the Wild. Saka, I bet you there's some tears behind some of these trees, mate. Like Masada with tears rolling down his face worked on the textures of those trees. Like you've traumatized the man. This man designed like a hundred new Pokemon and he starts getting arrows in his face for a tree. One such area is the Obsidian Field Blends. Okay, I saw a sucker running in the distance, and I kind of like that. It, it seems they're spawning from way further than in Sword and Shield. It's gonna make it more seamless. I feel like a freaking English teacher. I'm not gonna pause it anymore. But you can see the trainer exploring here. The area is filled with Pokemon that call meadows and forests their home. Sucker said field. Sucker said field. I see three Badoof. It's filled with plentiful, a bountiful harvest of Pokemon. Three Badoofs. You could have went to a scene where it was like a giant Gyarados, bro. I'm kidding! I'm kidding, announcer! I'm on your side, buy the game! Each area in Hisui has loads to discover, and you should make sure to collect a variety of different raw materials as good. you explore. Good! Good! Very good! 
Game Freak took some notes from other games, in a good way. These materials can be used to craft many items that will help you on your journey, including healing items, lures, smoke bombs, a mysterious invention called a Pokeball. So mysterious. It's like, this is mysterious. Your Pokemon team can help you collect these materials too. You can find all kinds of useful resources across the region just by breaking rocks. Yes! I called it! I'm j I, I didn't call much, it's the same trailer. This is good. I mean, it, to be honest, it does seem like a hassle. Like you find it, you gotta throw a freaking Rowlet at it, but this is good. And because you throw Rowlet, maybe you can look up and see one on a cliff and you can't reach the cliff, but you can throw a Pokeball at it and collect rare materials if you look around. And if they respawn in different locations rather than the same, it'll make it fun to just explore the region sometimes what you want to do like let's say you're 20% into the game is just load up the game and waste time not make progress but just explore and collect resources picking up plants growing in the wild grass defeating or catching pokemon or knocking items out of trees okay apricorn we got weed i think i saw that's good a good alternative games will do to this is where you can just buy the resources from the store. But if you work the extra grind and get them, just a bit of effort while you're exploring, it just puts you ahead of the curve. Here we see the trainer using some of the materials they have collected to craft items in preparation for their next mission. Oh, oh wow. You can pray to Pokeball using Apricorns and Tumblestone. Easy. Pixelmon's shaking, bro. Okay, forget I said that. Because in Pixelmon, you make your own Pokeballs too. I've never played it though. I don't know what you're talking about. This has a different vibe than just being able to buy Pokeballs. Like, bro, when I play these games, I'm an idiot and I'll talk, I'll knock up every tree. I'll collect every item. I'll go in and out of the route and collect like a hundred. I'll spend like two hours doing this. Am I, do I enjoy the grind? No, but am I an idiot? So, you know, you spend a bit of time doing this and you go to the next route with like 70 Pokeballs. You just feel stacked and you feel like you earned it. Oh, let's see potions. I just got excited when I saw that orange berries are needed to make potions. Like, can we, what if this is how it is in the game? We don't know what's in those medically, scientifically crafted potions that heal 20 health. Maybe it's grounded up orange berry. Potions are crafted using orange berries and medicinal leeks. Let's go. Okay, they're really establishing like these crafting recipes and stuff. There has to be more Legends games after this, man. It takes a lot of thought to put all this together. It can't just be a one-off game. Why you steal the Zelda sound effects, huh? Nah, it's good. I'll allow it. Introducing wild Pokemon, I guess. All kinds of Pokemon will appear. Sucker! That's not all kinds! <laughs> Look what you've done! That's the same freaking Badoof! Could have at least showed me a something else. You'll encounter a plethora of Pokemon. Different species of Pokemon also have different temperaments. Some may ignore you as you approach, like this Badoof. Damn, he dumb. Some species, like Starly, are skittish and will run away if they see you approaching. How stupid a Starly. Bro, these Starlies extinct. They the dodos, bro. I have a pigeon right outside my door. If I take one step, this man flies away. Why is this Starly hopping away, bro? Don't catch us, please. Like, sucker, you want us to catch you. Oh no, he's coming. Run, boys, run. There are even aggressive Pokemon that will attack you should they spot you in the wild. Oh, yes, Shink, stand up to him. If an aggressive Pokemon spots you, or if you fail to catch it on your first sneak attempt, the Pokemon will enter an alert state. The transition into battles is seamless. If you fail to catch it on your first sneak attempt, the Pokemon will enter an alert state. In this state, all Pokeballs you throw will simply be deflected. Hey, you onto something, Game Freak. This is not bad. This takes some planning, man. So if you sneak up on a Pokemon, you can like hit its ass and catch it before it realizes you're there. Kind of not really consensual, but this entire game isn't. But once you piss the Pokemon off, you have to fight it which is how Pokemon battles worked all this time. Also, when you hover over the Shinks, it tells you a research level. How cool would it be if you're in like the early part of the game and there's just like this level 30 Electivire roaming around. You can't take it out, but what if its capture rate was like 1%? So what if you could just save your game behind it, try to catch it in the sneak throw and just keep resetting? Like you feel me? In order to catch a Pokemon in this state, you must battle it. You can initiate a battle by throwing a Pokeball containing one of your own partner Pokemon near a wild Pokemon. It switches to battle mode and then in, in the bottom right it shows the other Pokemon you can switch into. Suck, you have a Shinx. Stop turning him extinct. The whole agile style and strong style thing, you got to play the game to get a feel how it works. But it seems it's pretty much the same as actual Pokemon battles. You go, then the enemy goes. You go, then the enemy goes. This is well implemented. They've turned the actual turn-based way Pokemon battles work well into an open exploration type game. 
it's crazy it's taken this long to get gameplay because this is actually giving us a feel for the game. Let's go! They freaking remixed the theme! My dogs, bro. Remix that crap. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. He murdered. You can use items. So like I've been here for like 18 hours looking at two minutes of footage. Bro, if they just showed those two minutes very early on, it would have made people more excited for the game. This is good. Bro, people are gonna have like 60 hour files of this game. I'm telling you, this is good. All right, let's talk about the freaking interface here, yeah? We got the Sheikah Slate. And then on the right side, we can switch between our items. And then we have our ride Pokemon here, which is sick. This stand is pretty much your bike. You're gonna want to use it as much as you can. You can use items to your advantage when catching wild Pokemon. Really? Like a citrus? What? Throwing a berry near a Pokemon will distract it. The Pokemon will then start eating. This is not consensual! Eating, the Pokemon is much less aware of your presence. You manipulator. Allowing you to go in for a backstroke. Manipulation simulator. So I kidnapped him! Baneri witnessed it! Kill it! Kill the freaking ba- Seamless level ups? Oh. Sucka must have studied different JRPGs. I'm telling you. You're just gonna be throwing balls at Pokemon and you're gonna slowly level up. When encountering aggressive wild Pokemon, you have to be careful. Oh, get away, bro. These Pokemon will not think twice about attacking you. Oh, he killed you. Let's go. If you take too much damage, you will black out and lose some of the items you were carrying when you fainted. Everything went black? Racist. Yo, first off, y'all took some more Zelda sound effects. No, I'm, I'm kidding. They're not freaking Zelda exclusive. If you take too much damage, I just love it. It could actually be terrifying to go to places. The idea that you could have like a safe campfire and you actually have to be scared of leaving is sick. There's a fake leak that came out once. I'll put it up on screen right now where it showed different difficulty levels. Imagine easy mode where when you blacked out, you don't lose your items, but in hard mode, you'll lose some items when you black out. Not because I want to lose my items, but so that you have that fear when you're walking around the wild. So if it's been like 20 minutes since you saved at a campfire, you'll be scared because you've collected all these items and you're realistically just trying to find another campfire. Like, get me home. I'm terrified. I got all these new Pokeballs and crap and you make it home and you breathe. You feel relieved. But if the new items you got didn't disappear when you blacked out, you could just go exploring far away, collecting stuff and then die and respawn, right? You will black out and lose some of the items you were carrying when you fainted. Uh, he said that. He said, he said, okay, this is good. No, this is good. I'm excited. And it tells you the items you lost. Suck a Masada didn't make this game. Masada don't- How did Masada hit the right nerves with this? I'm actually gonna scream if I haven't saved and that elective art come anywhere near me. Yo, that'd be terrifying, bro. Because you can't even run away from him. This man's- This man's whacking you with moves. Shoot. It's your region Pokedex. Okay, this will be the last section we look at and then I'm ending this video. As part of the survey core, you are on a mission to catalog and research all the different Pokemon that live in the harsh environments of Hisui. So you go to this man, the professor, and show him like the six or seven new Pokemon you caught, even if there's duplicates, and he'll pay you money. And it's not a lot of money. And then there's also bonuses. Legit, I would be in Route 1 for eons. Just leveling up for no reason. Getting money for no reason. I'll catch like 70 Starlies, bro. And then I'll move on to Route 2. And I would do it all off screen. Don't give me this game. Not only will you need to catch many types of Pokemon on your mission, but you will also need to observe them using certain moves or displaying certain behaviors. When you are finished in the field, you can visit Professor Laventon to hand in your survey report. This will update your Pokedex as well as increase your rank in the survey core. Maybe it's like this. The more you catch, but also the more you observe a Pokemon, the higher the research level. So he just caught the Buizo, so it's level two. But if he sat there and saw the moves it used, tried throwing a citrus berry and saw that it hated it, it would start gathering data for foods that it doesn't like, moves it could use, and the research level would go up. We'll update your Pokedex. See, look, bro, the Shinx is level eight research. These guys have made them extinct. For preferred foods, it gives you silhouettes of the other foods. As well as increase your rank in the survey core. You will also receive funds from the professor, which you can use to buy items. Bro, not bad. You have a whole rank that can go up too. So there's so many benefits for you playing the game and not even making story progress, but just staying in the same area, catching stuff. Your rank can go up. You can get higher research levels on Pokemon, get more of their drops, hand it all in for money. This might be one of the first games where you really feel like you want to catch all the Pokemon. Who knows what could happen when your research rank goes up? It could be anything down to as little as just like the merchant sells things just a little bit cheaper. Traversing Hisui. Okay, last one. Luckily, 
Throughout your adventure, you will encounter a number of special Ooh. Pokemon. Weirdear helps you navigate on land faster. Let's go, don't fall off, I'll Easily die. And bravery, Get away from the me. Other hand, allows oh, um, did you switch? Because I'm gonna forget to switch and die. Isui and Braviary. He did switch. Damn. Braviary must be at the end of the game. This is too cheap. You could explore the whole region. Traverse the rivers and seas throughout the Hisui region. With these Pokemon by your side, you will be able to explore the Hisui region to your heart's content. That is facts. You see Mount Corner in the back? Holy. Okay, so I feel like 20% like into the game, you're going to get the word here. And then way further in the game, you'll get the freaking Basque Legion. Past the halfway point of the game, you'll get the freaking climbing Pokemon, whatever that is. And then near like the end of the game is when you'll get the Braviary. That Braviary is freaking overpowered. Jubilife Village. Okay, last one. Jubilife Village is the center of operations for the Galaxy Expedition Team. A group made up of people who have come from different regions to study and live in the harsh region of Hisui. Is that so? Well, this explains a lot. This explains why this man has Clay's hat and everything. There are hints of other regions in this region because people are coming to this region. Okay, facts. I wonder where that dude is coming from. Yunava? Or the Hawuno region, which is what Yunava used to be called. I'm freaking kidding. You're saying there's an ancient Yunava somewhere out there. This is where the sucker came from. I assume. The Galaxy team includes various core, such as the Medical Core and the Security Core, as well as the Survey Core, which carries out research on how Pokemon live. Medical Core and Security Core? Ancient Nurse Joy and Ancient Officer Jenny? After receiving a mission or a request, and preparing for your next excursion, you'll set out from the village to study one of the various areas of the Hisui region. Holy fam! We got one small village in the whole region of dangerous Pokemon to explore. That's scary. So you'll get like soft missions like adorable Starly. Show Marley the completed Pokedex entry for Starly. Maybe it needs to be like level 10 research data to get the whole Pokedex entry. So you got to know all the foods. You got to see all of its moves. Maybe catch like three, four of them. So that's a pretty sick mission because you would head out. But you would also collect all these resources, see a bunch of different Pokemon, probably catch them too. You level up, get a bunch of money before you bring the, home the Starly. Damn, so they've divided the map into pretty big sections. All of this is one section. God, couldn't you go left from Jubilife? Cross the freaking sea and go to the... Uh, that Cincinnati Island? I'm sorry, where is Cincinnati? Is it under the water? Are we gonna wait for Cincinnati to come out of the water? Who's smoking weed over here? Dude's hiding behind a cloud like they'll never spot him. Along with the headquarters of the Galaxy team and your own lodgings, Jubilife Village is also home to a variety of different services, such as the Clothier, the Craftworks, and the Trading Post. Uh, what the frick is a Clothier? One who makes or sells clothing. There's also the Craftworks, where he sells materials and recipes. So you level up yourself enough, you come to this man, just speculating. Maybe you can buy a great ball recipe for all this money. And maybe you have to be way later in the game to get the recipe, but you grind it out early, and you can get it early here from this man. It's like you have full control over how you want to play the game and whether you want to put effort in or not. And the trading post. Okay, the trading post is to trade with other players, but how cool would it be if it rotated trades in game? So like someone would ask for something hard to get like a Staravia, but you could catch a Starly and grind it out and then trade it for something good. All right, I'm done guys. I'm gonna end it there. Go on and shank that like button. I will finish the other half of this video at some point, but if I make this too long, I'm just not gonna edit it, okay? This trailer makes a giant difference and it feels like mostly an empty trailer, but the only thing everyone's been waiting for us to see how the game works and we're finally seeing how the game works so this is this is all they needed to show all right shank that like button and i'll see you in 800 years maybe tomorrow or something all right maybe i'll watch the rest of this right now all right take care